Hello, it's Chino here, and today I'd like to go through my game of the day from round four of the three day candidates. And this one was between Maxime Vachel Lagrave and Alexander Grishuk. And we had a Roy Lopez in this game. And typically, after this move, Bishop to b5, Black would normally go a6. But in this game, Grishuk went for the Berlin. Defense, which has become really popular these days, especially at Grandmaster and Super Grandmaster level. And um, Maxime continued with Castle's Kingside. And now the main line, main move in a Berlin, um, Knight takes e4. Now, White continued with d4, um, but it's also worth no noting that um, Rook e1 is also possible. And... Yeah, you sometimes see this in games, but it doesn't particularly cause black too many problems after knight to d6, threatening the bishop on b5, knight takes e5, and obviously black doesn't have time for knight takes um, b5 because of the, the discover check, um, <laughs> and a quick win, um, well, actually, just take the, the queen first. Um, for um, so win for white here, so yeah. Usually after um the position with knight takes e five, black would usually go knight takes e five, and if rook takes e five check bishop to e seven, when black should be okay. So for example, um, black has to do something with the bishop on b five, and if white, sorry, white has to do something with the bishop on b five, and if white goes bishop to f one. And simple castles kingside, and after a natural developing move like d4, bishop f6, rook e1, knight f5, would allow black to develop his pieces normally. So if we go back to the main um, position after knight takes e4, so we've just seen rook to e1 doesn't give black any particular problems, and so d4 is the most popular continuation for white but then after knight to d6 threatening the bishop on b5 and white just goes bishop takes c6 pawn takes um, c6 so notice we captured with a d pawn here so we can give this bishop you know some air along the diagonal and then white goes pawn takes e5 and after knight f5 queen takes the check king takes d8 so if we just um take stock of the position for a second and um, what we have here is a queenless middle game with quite a few imbalances so black's got the bishop bear but i mean white's got the better placed pieces and there's also the potential of white getting the this you know king side um pawn majority rolled in if we get to an end game anyhow um if we continue um so here white went and um, pawn to h3 but it's just worth pointing out here that rook to d1 check is also possible but it doesn't make too much sense because you're forcing black to go king e8 which he wants to do anyway um as we'll see in the game and um, so go back to the position here knight to c3 is also possible but it usually transposes um to similar positions we get um from the game continuation so yeah so after king takes d8 um white played pawn to h3 this if you like is a sort of a useful waiting move because um, this pawn on h3 will support g4 at some point in the future and it also prevents obviously a bishop from landing on g4 at some point in the future and allows the king you know an escape square you know in case the back rank becomes weak but moving on so after h3 and uh, we see the move i talked about king to e8 which black wants to play anyway so king to e8 avoids a check on d1 and i suppose protects the f7 square 
and right just continues um with the normal development move knight to c3 so yeah um you see why could have played this move on the um previous um goal but he plays it here so and um, transposition and now um typical move in this sort of position is h5 obviously trying to secure the knight on f5 discouraging you know pawn to g4 because after the exchanges you'll have an open file for the rook um h5 was met by a simple developing move bishop to f4 and if we go back a second it's what noting bishop g5 has been tried before but it doesn't particularly cause black any problems after something like bishop to e6 rook f to d1 bishop to e7 with equality i mean black's gonna play rook to d8 probably um at some point to exchange rooks with a very um, easy position to play so if we go back to the position after h5 so instead of this move bishop to g5 we saw white go bishop to f4 and now simple development from black bishop to e7 and we just see both sides developing the pieces over the next couple of moves rook a to d1 centralizing the the a rook bishop to e6 and now we see um, the main move in this position, knight to g5. Um, obviously, white's not worried about bishop um, capture on g5 because um, black would be giving up the bishop pair advantage. Now, this knight, obviously, um, sorry, go back and move um, there. This knight wants to capture on e6. Um, yeah, just to <laughs> capture one of those bishops. Um, but black plays an instructive move here, which is rook to h6. Now, the reason black plays rook to h6 is if black carries on with knight takes e6, rook takes e6 will put some pressure on the e5 pawn. So just to give you an idea of how this might work out, after say a move like rook f to e1 and g5, um, bishop c1 would allow you know black some initiative with g4 and um, i'll just pause for a second while we look at this position black's getting some serious counter play here and if we go back to the position after g5 so into the bishop to c1 white could probably play bishop to h2 and um, but again <laughs> black is still getting some counter play with and um, bishop to b4 and um, we see this move anyway in the game continuation um, but yeah i'll just go back and show you just one more move and um, just before we carry on i mean after rook to h6 you would think this is fairly risky for black and um, but the the truth is white has no way to exploit you know the rook on this diagonal with the bishop so, for example, if um, Y goes something like uh, G to E4, Black can even go <laughs> Rook to G6, and all of a sudden you've got a few threats. You know, Bishop takes H, I assume the Knight's not there, Bishop takes H3 on the card. So, White has to be a bit careful in this sort of setup. So going back to our move 13 after white's play knight g5 and we see this clever move rook to h6 and um, from black white just played a simple developing move which was the other rook to e1 and now we see um, the game continuation bishop b4 and now it looks as though white has to play this move bishop d2 which would be my preference but this position or if you go back and move has been analyzed sorry i just I just go back one more move this position has been analyzed extensively in theory and there are a couple of games in my database with this position and um, white goes for the interesting and more active continuation which is a3 and um, it's important to note the white 
doesn't mind giving up the bishop. I'm um, sorry, doesn't mind giving up the knight for the bishop because then again, black's losing the bishop pair, and there's no immediate way for black to exploit, you know, the supposed pawn weaknesses on the queen side. And um, so after pawn takes c3, and uh, black continued h4. Now this is typical in this type of positions to prevent, say, a move like g4. But what's interesting here is white plays g4 anyway, um, trying to embarrass the the knight. But I, I don't think this is too challenging for black if he finds the right moves. But anyway, let's see how the game goes. And um, pawn takes g3 on passant, and um, pawn takes g3. And now black just simply plays knight to e7. That knight's planning to come to d5 to um, threaten the bishop. And also, we see that the bishop and rook are aiming at the h3 pawn. So for that reason, white goes pawn to h4 and defending the pawn. And then we see that move knight to d5. So black succeeded in rerouting that knight to a, a very good central square. And at the same time is threatening to win a pawn on c3. Now it is plus, plus, plausible for white to play bishop to d2 here. But that's a bit passive. So white goes for a more active continuation. Yeah, so sorry, let's just go back to the position with knight to d5. So rather than play bishop to d2, white just goes bishop to c1. And we'll see why this move is a reasonable alternative. Because after... I take c3 and rook to d3. The knight is almost forced to go to um, a4. And after knight a4, rook to f3. And what we see here is white's, you know, attacking the f7, aiming at the f7 pawn. And black goes bishop to d5. Yeah, some counterplay, but simple, simple rook to f4. Threatening the knight in a4. And when the knight moves back to b6, which is what happened in the game, we see this move rook e to f1, putting another piece, um, you know, against, well, aiming at the f7 um, square with another piece. And black played the um, clever move, um, rook to g6. The point being, if the knight moves, then this g3 pawn is exposed and here white played a move i have to admit i don't completely understand played rook to f5 but if we just go back one move i think a more accurate try here would have been um, king to h7 um releasing the knight to sorry i didn't mean to play that move and um, releasing the knight to capture on f7 um, but for some curious reason, and um, just go back to the position after rook to g6. For some curious reason, instead of king to h2, we see white go rook to f5. Okay, so black just continued simply bishop to c4, attacking the rook on e1. And here white had to go rook to e1. It's worth noting here that rook um, 1 to f2 would give black a small initiative after rook to d8 notice the threat on the back line gets a bit uncomfortable for for white to meet so going back to the position after bishop to c4 rook to e1 was played and now we had king to e7 i suppose this allows the rook the other a8 rook to come to f8 one day if if necessary uh, but anyway, from here on, white tries to force the play. So he goes h5. And threatening the rook. Rook had to move to h6. And g4 was played to secure the h4 pawn. And now we had rook to h to h8. I suppose that rook wants to come to a more active um, file at some point. Well... Now, white played a curious um, gambit, so pawn to a4. And 
Well, what we can see here is the pawn's aiming to go to a5 to harass the knight on b6. Um, and black took the pawn. But let's just see um, what happens if black just plays something like a natural move like a5 to stop the pawn from advancing. Now, this would be a mistake here because white would continue bishop to a3 check. And after king to e8, probably the best square for the king. Knight takes f7. Um, shocker. Well, it's a tactical shot. And um, the point being that after bishop takes f7, e6 would regain the piece with a winning attack. Um, I'll leave you to analyze this in your spare time. But um, if we just go back to the position after a4. So we see a5 wasn't really an option. And um, bishop e6 was a, a reasonable try for black. But as it turns out, white has some initiative. Um, so he could start by knight takes e6. And I have to say something like pawn to e6. Rook to g5, attacking the g7 pawn. Rook to f7. Rook to g6. And interesting here is white's got a strong threat of rook to f1 check, where he's going to win at least one pawn back with strong play against the black king. One sample line would go something like, say, knight takes a4, rook to f1 check, the move we were just talking about, king to g8, rook takes e6. And if something like a5, um, rook to e7, and I mean, it's obvious here, black's going to lose, give back one pawn, and we can see another rook coming to f7. So white, white should be better in this position. And so if we just track back a bit, back to the game, and to the position after pawn to a4, and we see black just snap the pawn off the board with knight takes a4. And after knight takes a4, and um, bishop to a3 check and um, c5 and now white played a curious move e6 now this this move actually caused black quite a bit of trouble in the game and um, one other way to play would have been rook to e4 but that would have just led to a uh, draw force draw i mean one critical line is bishop to e6 threatening the rook on f5 but after knight takes e6 Pawn takes e6, rook to g5, knight to c3, rook to c4, threatening the knight, knight to b5. White can simply just play rook takes c5. The point being after knight takes a3, check, rook takes g7, king to f8, rook c times c7, when black would be unable to stop, you know, the checks with the rooks and... So we're going to have some kind of perpetual check. So just going back to the position. And after bishop a3 check and c5. White played this move e6. Which caused black a fair bit of trouble in the game. And um, so we, we saw this response pawn to f6. But quickly if we just look at what's wrong with bishop takes e6. Well white's got this move. <laughs> Rook takes f7 where white wins at least a piece um, and should be winning. Um, so if we go back after the position after c5 and e6. So here rather than bishop takes e6 we saw um, this move which was pawn to f6. Note the pawn takes um, e6 would also allow um, rook to f7 check. It's a good game for, for white. So yeah. So after um, c5, e6. After this e6 move. We saw black try. Pawn to f6. Now. White went. Bishop takes c5. Check. Knight takes c5. Rook takes c5. And we see here that. Although the white knight is hanging. So is the bishop on c4 now this was a critical position in the game uh my computer 
comes up with this move b5 but it's a bit complicated and not very human a better try or more human try would have been the move and um, pawn to c6 because after that move um if say knight to f7 for example bishop takes e6 knight takes h8 rook takes h8 what we see here is we've got black's got a bishop and two pawns against the rook which should give him good drawing chances uh going back to the game so after rook takes c5 instead of playing c6 or b5 which was computer suggestion black just went pawn takes uh, g5 and here i think white has a, a slight advantage uh, so we saw this move rook takes c7 check and after king d6 rook takes c4 and just to try and stay active black tried pawn to a5 and now <laughs> critical um, point again in the game this was white's chance to if you like get a big advantage against black and the correct move would have been rook to d4 check the idea being king to e7 will lose after something like rook to d7 check etc um so after rook to d4 check instead of king to e7 black would have had to play king to c6 when the move rook e to d1 would give white you know a strong advantage probably not enough for a win with best play but i mean practical winning chances for white i mean you got a pass pawn a pawn and this king is badly exposed okay so going back to the game so in the position after rook takes c4 um, and black played a5 with activity so yeah we see <laughs> white's missed this move active move rook to d4 um and instead played rook to d1 check um well now this just allowed white to play king e7 and and this position um i mean it was proven to be equal in the game even analyzing it with an engine i can't find a win for white so we saw the move rook to e4 and defending the pawn and threatening rook to d7 check but then simply rook h to d8 and um, white tried to avoid trade with rook to b1 black simply defended the b7 um, pawn with rook d to b8 we saw rook to b5 threatening the g5 pawn and um, black continued to counterplay a4 i mean white has to be careful that this pawn doesn't run all the way to a1 but then yeah we just saw this other move rook takes e5 and now rook to g8 um h6 um was a little bit premature but i i don't think white had too many other tries because after rook takes sorry after pawn takes h6 uh, rook takes g8 rook takes g8 rook takes a4 yeah uh, we have this curious position where black and um, can gain back one pawn with a drawn ending so we had what h5 um, and after king f2 rook takes g4 rook takes g4 h takes g4 with a theoretically drawn end game so we'll just look at the moves the last few moves king to g3 was played to gain the black pawn king takes e6 obviously white has to go king takes g4 and we just saw the two guys knock out the remaining moves in what was a theoretically drawn endgame. Um, yeah, and it was a peaceful draw between um, here, Vashiel Lagrave and Grishuk. So, yeah, this was an interesting game. Uh, a draw, but it was a fighting draw between both players. And I think the key move was on move... Oh, yeah, I think it was move 36 when White should have played this move, rook to d4 check. 
um, but somehow missed this. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and yeah, please um, don't forget to 